This is Taspoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After nearly two years and over 4,000 hours of gameplay, I'm finally ready to take on RuneScape's endgame as I venture into the Elite tier. Welcome to Season 4 of Taspoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 128 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, I spent like 8 days doing back-to-back -back Guardians of the Rift tasks and then another 5 days at General Gardor where we managed to snag ourselves a Bando's Hilt and we ended the video by rolling a task to complete the Kandoran Elite Diary, where the only task I have left is to read the blackboard with level 5 rolls in every roll at Barbarian Assault. So I'm going to go do some Barbarian Assault, and uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long. This should be a pretty quick one, and we should be able to move on to something else. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the last two diaries I have left, so hopefully we can end up rolling the Falador Diary pretty soon as well, and actually get the Achievement Diary cape, which would be pretty sick. Okay, so I need to get level 5 in all rolls, and currently I've only leveled up Attacker and Collector once, uh, so I'm going to have to be here for a while, and I'm going to call upon the clan chat. Hopefully some people in there need some Barbarian Assaulting done, and that way I don't have to deal with the random people in World 306, so be right back while I try and find a team. Okay, fortunately I was able to find some people from the clan who wanted to do some Barbarian Assaulting with me, uh, and... Yeah, then we're just going to do it. Uh, this is probably going to take a while. I don't really know what I'm going to show you guys, but uh, yeah, here we go. And already halfway through the first round and I could level up to level three attacker. Very nice. And this is going to be level four attacker. This is honestly going significantly faster than I expected, which is very nice. Uh, I guess I forgot that the main problem with Barbarian Assault is the people and not the minigame. The minigame itself is actually pretty quick, so we're kind of flying through this. Alright, and there is a level 5 attacker. A 1 out of 4, the roll's done. Uh, just gonna finish off this round as attacker, just not mess with things, but uh, yeah, this is, this is going by very quickly. Moving on to doing some collecting now. I figured that I was already level 2 collector, so it'd be the fastest to get next. And that's just the way the roles sort of worked out in the group. So, uh, yeah, again, shouldn't take too long. And there is level 3 collector. Okay, gonna have to take a short break here. We're at 300 out of 400 points for the next level. But it is Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm gonna go watch the game. So, uh, hopefully there's people on when I come back, because, yeah, these are going really well. I decided to do a little bit of alking while I was watching the Super Bowl, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up to over 100 mil cash now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, didn't quite make it through all my battle staves, but I can play the game again now, so I'm going to do that. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find people to do it with me from the clan, so I'm going to have to venture into the, the wild, wild west that is World 306, so uh, yeah, hopefully I can find some people that actually know what they're doing. Okay, so I found a group going to be doing some defendering, and uh, I learned something about leveling up your defender role. Uh, going from level 1 to 2, which I will be able to do next round, uh, increases the range that your bait works by one tile, but then 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5 all do absolutely nothing. There's literally no reason to level it up other than to get your diaries done, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> And there is level 2 Defender. Every time I have to do Barbarian Assault on this series, I always forget just how much I enjoy Defender. It's so rewarding when you play it well and you could just finish, like, way before everyone else. I don't know. I remember when I was growing up, like, as a kid playing RuneScape, I hated Defender because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, but now that I know what I'm doing, it is by far my favorite role. Oh yeah, and there is level 4 Defender. I forgot to record level 3. That was like one of the best groups I've ever seen. 1356 round duration with a group of randoms. That's pretty sick. And uh, I'm at 500, I think, exactly. That's kind of crazy. Let me go check. Wow, yeah, a perfect 500 points. There is level 5 defender. Uh, I'm honestly a little disappointed. I was having a lot of fun with that. But yeah, uh, two more collector levels and then all of my healer levels. I'm gonna go try and find that. Maybe I'll try and find that same group. That was actually so fast. And there is level 4 collector. And there is level 5 Collector. And not only did I get my level 5 Collector done, but the other healer agreed to swap me, so I get to go right into my healer games. And level 2 healer. And level 3 healer. 
and level four healer. And there is level five healer. We are done. Just gonna finish this round because I'd be cringe if I left. So give me one sec. Okay, so I think all I have to do is click on this blackboard and we should be done. Kandarin Elite Diary. And then we can talk to the Wedge to get our rewards. Very nice. Uh, and speaking of rewards, I'll put them on screen here. Uh, first and foremost, Antique Lamp, 50k. You already know that's going on Herblore. Uh, unlimited teleports to Sherlock, finally. Uh, especially with having to do more Elite and Master Clues in the Elite tier. This is going to be very nice. A uh, bunch of other stuff that I don't really care about. And 15% increased chance to save a Harvest Life. Uh, that's just sort of nice, I guess. But yeah, the main thing, the unlimited teleports here is very nice. And uh, yeah, one more diary to go and we get the achievement cape, which is going to be sick. But uh, let's go see what our next task is. Okay, spreadsheet time. Complete the task. And let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique from the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Huh. Okay. I do have to do a little bit of editing right now, and my AFK activity of choice is mining. Uh, previously, I was doing a lot of fishing to get some fishing levels and some food, and then I was doing some woodcutting because it was super AFK. Uh, but I would like to try and get 92 mining. Uh, 92 is for Amethyst, which is again another extremely AFK activity, but at least it actually gives me something. Uh, whereas the shooting stars, I don't really need the stardust, I just use it for soft clay packs, uh, which I have lots of right now. But yeah, mining is my AFK activity of choice. Just going to do this while I edit the last video. I like how you can tell just how long these videos are taking for me to edit by how much stardust I'm getting per video. There's a nice 6,000 stardust stack and perfect timing here as the star is about to run out. 89 mining. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about these Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Of the four Desert Treasure 2 bosses, being Duke Succulus, the Leviathan, Vardorvis, and the Whisperer, uh, I really don't have much experience killing any of them. Obviously, I killed them all once for the quest, and I killed a bit of Leviathan on Leagues, but it was kind of just cheesing it with my uh, ZCB specs. So I don't really know any of the bosses that well to say that like I'm comfortable with their mechanics, but I do think Leviathan might be the easiest boss for me. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one I kill. I'm probably going to end up just getting the either the quartz or or the teleport tablet or something. Uh, probably not going to get like anything actually like good, like the vestige or anything like that. So yeah, I think I'm going to kill Leviathan, but I don't really know yet. Funny enough, if I end up killing Leviathan for this task, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to try first, uh, it's actually even more sad that I didn't get the Tarnish Locket uh, at the end of those two Guardians of the Rift tasks, because now my fastest way back is to Necklace of Passage to the Wizard's Tower, and then run through the basement, and then over this guy, and then over... It's a whole thing, uh, but yeah, I guess, I mean, now I can get the tablet, and then I'd sort of have a fast teleport back here, but uh, yeah, kind of missing that uh, Amulet of the Eye right about now. Okay, so I watched a few videos just to get the mechanics down that I didn't really get to see on Leagues uh, because I was just skipping most of the phases, and it really doesn't look too hard. Uh, the unfortunate part is I don't have a Webweaver bow, so my spec weapon or my ending kill weapon is going to be a blowpipe. I don't even know if this is going to end up being better. I might just end up using the bow for the whole time, but uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to try it. It's that easy! Holy! <laughs> wait, the wait, the boss was really fun and honestly kind of easy, and then I got the item immediately. Man, I'm kind of disappointed. I wanna I wanna I wanna do that more now. Uh okay, well, we're done! <laughs> well, I guess that is the ideal item to get first if I'm gonna be killing more of this, but uh yeah, the tablet, I think I just have to use it on the ring, and now my ring can actually teleport there, although I don't have any charges. Uh, blood and Law Runes, one sec. Sorry, it was Soul, Death, Blood, and Law Runes, but there we go, a thousand charges in there, and now I can just teleport to the Scar whenever I want, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're done! <laughs> that's, 
it was honestly, it was just too easy. I can't believe that just happened the way it did, but uh, yeah, we're done. Let's go roll a new task. Okay, here we go back on the spreadsheet. We can complete the task. And I just went and checked and the Desert Treasure 2 boss uniques actually make up 10 of the remaining 146 tasks left in the Elite tier. So there actually is a pretty good chance that we end up getting another one right now. Uh, so yeah, let's just see what it is. Let's go! I'm actually like way too excited for this. That was really fun. I realize now that I didn't actually talk about the drop rate of any of the items, like, at all. So I'll put them on screen here. Uh, but that tablet drop is actually, like, a 1 in 25. I think it gets more common the more kills you do. But obviously, that was my first kill. So, yeah, 1 in 25 on that one. Uh, there's the Awakener's Orb, which is, like, a 1 in 50-something. The Quartz is a 1 in 200-something. But that also scales uh, the more kills you do without getting it. And uh, the Virtus pieces are all very rare. They're, like, 1 in... 2300 or something the ingots one and 250 ish the vestige and the lure are both one in 760 something i don't know uh there's a lot of items i can get here though so i have no idea what like the overall rate would be on finishing the task on any given kill uh but yeah like i said i'm just excited to do more that was really fun i will say it feels pretty good to get lucky on something again Recently, my luck has been average to terrible. I haven't really gotten, like, actually lucky on anything recently. So, yeah, 1KC tablet, that is that is pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, here we are. We're just going to go again. I don't know why I haven't, like, heard more about this boss, but I actually really like it. I'm sure there's lots of things that, like, the more I do, the more I'll get frustrated with it. But just being able to react to, like, pretty much every instance of damage, like, everything is avoidable, and I love that in a fight. Also, I did just briefly want to explain what the heck's going on here with the tile markers. For anyone that hasn't done the fight before, uh, the lightning special attack you can avoid by just running back and forth between these tile markers. And I've colored them so you know which pair of tiles to run back and forth between. Uh, the side tiles here are for determining which special attack is going to come first. If the boulders fall on the sides here, it's going to be the lightning attack, which is the blue. And if it spawns on the other sides on the brown tiles, it's going to be the boulders. And uh, this tile here is just so I can remember which one is the northwest tile, which is where the orb in the last phase is supposed to spawn, unless it's covered by rocks. Uh, but yeah, these are just to help me remember sort of where I am and wh what's going on in the fight. I did also quickly want to mention there is a mechanic for the loot table where if you do a perfect kill, you get like 50% more loot. Uh, perfect kill is avoiding any damage from any of the auto attacks or the special attacks, except for any of the unavoidable damage like when he does his roar, and avoiding any chip damage in the enrage phase, meaning that you have to pray correctly and be in the orb the entire enrage phase, which is a lot. Uh, for someone who's still learning the boss, so I don't think I'll be getting very many of those, but all it does is give you like 50% more loot on all of the other drops. Uh, the unique drops aren't affected. So, yeah, just wanted to mention that. Oh well, I'm finally starting to understand the boss and sort of the flow of how everything works. As you saw that, that was another PB 208 there, and a four kill trip, meaning that I, you know, wasn't taking a lot of damage. So, yeah, feeling good. I like, I like this boss, man. Ooh, nice. Okay, I know this is kind of random, but I needed to get a thumbnail for my last video, and I figured that I'm already doing Leviathan anyway, so I'm in the area, and I came over here and turned on the HD plugin, and this place looks amazing in HD. Usually I don't actually like playing with the HD plugin. I just use it for the screenshots because it makes the thumbnail look better. But oh my god, this place looks so good. Sorry. Anyway, Leviathan. So, uh... 
Anyone ever trapped themselves in with a bunch of boulders, or is that just me? I'm a genius! Wait, I'm gonna die! Wait, I'm a genius! Hey, let's go! It's totally worth it! PB. Hey! Not only did I get my first perfect kill, but it was on a dragon bolt drop. Let's go. By the way, if you've been keeping up with the updates recently, they did actually add combat achievements for the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. So if we take a look at the Leviathan one, I've actually got two of them already. Uh, one is literally just to kill it once, uh, and one is to kill it while only stunning it once, which I thought that was sort of the standard, but apparently that's a master level task. And unfortunately, all the other ones are kind of lame. Uh, it's a speed task, a KC task, a speed task, uh, kill it five times perfectly without leaving, which is okay, I guess, but eh, I'm probably not going to get that considering my trips are only like five kills and they're definitely not all perfect. And then uh, the Awakened, which obviously I'm not doing right now, another speed task, and then this one where you have to kill it using mithril ammunition without having more than 25. I don't know what the heck this is. Uh, I am definitely not doing that. This is honestly the only combat achievement that was like unique. In any way, uh, all of these, I, I don't know, they're kind of lame. It's just KC, speed task, KC, speed task, perfect kills. Uh, so yeah, not really worried about the combat achievements. Hey, another perfect kill. Let's go. I'm really starting to get the hang of this boss. That was a 10 kill trip. Now, admittedly, I did get a bunch of supply drops, so I can't really expect that all the time, uh, but it, that was pretty good. I'm feeling good. Hey, a PB, nice, two minutes. Oh yeah, I started bringing these dragon knives in the Odium Ward for a swap for a spec weapon at the end in the Enrage phase. I didn't, like, read anywhere online that it said to do that. I just sort of thought that I'm never going to use these anywhere else anyway. And they they actually sort of work. It's kind of like a like a budget webweaver bow. And it's really awkward to use. But, uh, you know, anytime I have spec, it's almost like a guaranteed insta-kill at the end. So, it kind of works. It's Wednesday, my dudes. And, you know, that means it is game update day and there's a couple cool things in today's game update. Some forestry changes, uh, change to the cost that you have to pay to enter some of the wilderness bosses. They made it, finally they made it so that you don't lose it if you die. Uh, if you've left the wilderness since you've been in one of the boss caves, which is amazing. And more importantly, they added this barbarian training mini quest, uh, which is exactly what it says. It is the barbarian training steps that you had to take uh, just in mini quest form. And all of the things that you've already done are already completed. But they also added barbarian farming, where you can farm without needing a seed dipper. So I'm just going to go complete the rest of this mini quest real quick. I assume it's going to take like two minutes uh, and then we will get back to the Leviathan. Okay, well, uh, that was easy. Uh, I literally just smashed a few potato seeds into the ground with my fists, and then I planted a tree and smashed a pot with my fists, and then this guy said, I've trained you in all the ways that I can. So, thank you, Otto. We are done that. Again, complete on the mini quest there. And, uh, yeah, back to Leviathan. Hey, 50kc achievement. Okay, well, we are up to 56kc at this point. Uh, which means that we are definitely past the right to see a new unique item. Uh, like I said before, there are so many different items that all have different rates, and some of the rates change when you get different kill counts, so it's really hard to actually determine what the rate of seeing a new item is here, uh, but the Awakener, Awakener's Orb by itself is a 1 in 53.6, so we're over the drop rate to see even just that, not even including any of the other stuff. So, yeah, definitely over the rate at this point, but that's okay, we're we're just going to keep going. 
And in case you're wondering, I, I have died a few times here. I have seven deaths. I don't know what I'm going to put in the video, uh, but I'm definitely not going to include them all like I did in the Bandos video. I just thought it was funny how many times I died at Bandos. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel pretty good here. Still dying a bit, but uh, yeah, the kills are coming faster. Trips are longer. Hopefully we are done soon. Hey, let's go! Smoke Quartz! Literally the next kill after I said that I hope we're done soon, and we're done, and it was soon! A and the Smoke Quartz is not the most common item. I was expecting to get an Awakener's Orb. Now, I don't know what the exact drop rate of the Smoke Quartz is at 57 KC because of the vari var variable drop rate when you do more kills. I don't really know what the rate is, but we're done! Let's go! Now, for anyone that may be unaware, the Smoke Quartz is combined with the Ancient Scepter to make the Smoke Ancient Scepter, which enhances Smoke Ancient Magic spells, which I can't actually think of a time that that's useful. Uh, but more importantly, I don't have an Ancient Scepter yet. I haven't actually killed that much Muspa, and I haven't got an Ancient Icon, so it's not useful for me right now. And even if I did have one, it's still not very useful, but... Whatever, we're done! There is one additional use for the quartzes. You can go to the Ancient Vault, which is where Desert Treasure 2 starts and ends, and there is a chest in there that you can use the quartz on and receive an additional roll on the drop table. Uh, it isn't the full drop table, but it is like some of the more notable items. So I could go and use this smoke quartz on it, and each of the items are a 1 in 5 chance to either get smoke runes, manta rays, dragon bolts, gold ore, or dragon javelin heads. None of those are really that useful for me right now, even though this isn't useful for me at all right now, I'm just going to keep it. But any additional quartzes you get from any of the bosses, you can go over there and use them. I actually didn't know that until starting this task and doing some research, and that's kind of cool. A use for those quartzes that you don't really want duplicates of. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for this one. Let's go get a new task. Once again, I just have to say I'm so happy I got back-to-back -back tasks of that, because I actually had a lot of fun with that boss. And uh, yeah, I would have been very disappointed doing the one kill and then not being able to go back there for a while. But yeah, we can complete the task and let's see what we're doing next. Okay, my, my spreadsheet's been having some troubles, so hopefully this works. Okay, well, it worked. I don't know, that was kind of weird. Uh, get one new unique from Master Clues. Okay. I swear there are other clue tasks on the Elite tier. Uh, there is more Master Clue tasks than any other type, but... Uh, it's just sort of weird, we've gotten three Master Clue tasks now without any other ones. And speaking of, apparently I've got a bunch of clues to go do. But we do already have 14 caskets, so hopefully we are already done this task. Uh, if we're not, I'm going to be really sad. But let's just open them and hope for the best. And we're done! Hood of Darkness, let's go! I can already tell I'm going to be super disappointed when I run out of these caskets, but for now, I'm loving these Master Clue tasks. Super easy, I just get to go and open a bunch of Master Clues I've already done. It's like, it's like Christmas, I just get to open a bunch of presents, but uh, yeah, there it is, Hood of Darkness. Cool, uh, makes your eyes funny, I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, we're done, let's go get a new task. Alright, you know what it is, back on the spreadsheet, complete the task, and let's see what we're actually going to go do. Get one unique from the Phantom Busva. Oh, well, that's convenient. Right after talking about how I didn't have the ancient icon, we got a Phantom Muspa task. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, Phantom Muspa, uh, the charged ice is on the passive tier, so that doesn't count. So we're either going to be getting an ancient icon or one of five needed Venator shards. And uh, yeah, I'm not really that experienced with Muspa. As you can see, I've only got 14 KC. Uh, so I need to go and sort of refresh what I need to do for this boss. But I know I have some significant upgrades since the last time I've been here. So hopefully it won't be too bad. So this is what the setup was looking like before. Uh, as you can see, I've got some pretty significant upgrades all around. But I think I'm just going to switch to doing ranged only. Uh, I don't really know what the best method's going to be here, but now that I have full crystal, I feel like it's just so good everywhere. So I might just try and do full crystal Bofa, ranged only, maybe bring a crossbow switch for the smite phase and some sapphire bolts. Uh, but I don't really know, I don't know what the best thing to do here is. 
So I'm going to look into it a little bit. Okay, I think this is what I'm going to go with. Uh, just going to do the range only, full crystal like usual, and bringing the rune crossbow, odium ward, and the sapphire bolts for the smite phase. Hopefully that is enough. And yeah, bringing thralls for the extra DPS. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm just going to go send it. Next time I get a Desert Treasure 2 boss task, I think I might try and do some Duke. And if I can get the tablet for the teleport there, it actually teleports you like right next to Muspa as well, which is super useful. Now, I do have the Weiss teleport in my uh, portal nexus in my house, so it's not like I have to run that far. But I'm pretty sure the Duke teleport puts you like right here. It's literally right outside Muspa. So maybe I'll try that next time. Okay, I think I'm ready to send it. Uh, the only thing I'm even slightly concerned about, really, is the step back part of it. Uh, I haven't really done that before, but it looks really easy, so yeah. I'm just gonna go, and we're gonna learn by doing. Okay, so range only definitely works pretty well. Uh, I'm happy with the method that I chose. Uh, now, I will say, I don't think I cast a single thrall the entire time I was in there. Just sort of completely forgot that I had those. And uh, the step back method, I understand it now. I'm not good at it yet, but I think it won't take me very long to get better at it. And other than that, uh, everything seemed pretty good. So I'm just going to restock and go again. I did just want to briefly mention, uh, Phantom Muspa, obviously, is what drops the Ancient Essence, which I would love to be able to get to 150,000 to saturate my imbued heart, uh, so that is a side goal of mine. And also, once I finish getting the Icon and the Venator Shard, so there's two more tasks on the Elite tier uh, for Phantom Muspa Uniques, so once I'm done that, I can come back here whenever I want. And I think I will come back here, like I said, to farm the Ancient Essence and to get another four Venator Shards, uh, just because I want the bow. I don't really know where it'd be like that useful. I just think it's cool and I want it. So eventually I will come back here and just sort of do some kills passively, uh, sort of like how after I finished getting all my Zolra Uniques, I just sort of let myself go back for scales whenever I want. Once I'm done all of the Phantom Muspa tasks on the spreadsheet, I will allow myself just to come back here and do some kills. So this is good practice. I am going to need to do this a bunch of times. The Venator Shard is a 1 in 100. So on average luck, I would need to do 500 kills to get the bow. So yeah, this is just this is good practice. And I actually kind of like this boss for now. PB. I also forgot to mention that Phantom Muspa is insane for loot. I've done six kills and I've got 843k worth of loot. That's insane. And it's like actually useful stuff for an Iron Man. A lot of the times like the loot value might be really high, but the stuff that you get isn't really useful on an Iron Man or I don't have any use for it specifically. But most of the stuff I'm getting is actually like very good for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this. Okay, that's gotta be sub three minutes. That was so fast. Hey, let's go 237. Heck yeah. I mean, like, this is crazy. I'm leaving Muspa with more things than I went in there with. Like, more potions, more. I mean, obviously, I'm using sharks, but, like, this loot is just awesome. Okay, I got a combat achievement for something. Apparently that combat achievement was to kill him without taking any avoidable damage, so more like a perfect kill. Usually it says, like, perfect Phantom Muspa, I don't know why this one's called Walk Straight Pray True, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, and, and I'm learning, so that's good. As far as the rest of the combat achievements go, there are the regular, like, KC achievements and the other speedrun achievements, but there actually is quite a few more unique ones, uh, like killing without running, killing it while draining its prayer with three different sources, killing with a salamander, etc., uh, but I don't think I'm really going to bother with any of them. 
Uh, well, actually, you know what? I can do the versatile drainer if I just bring something for greater corruption. I think as long as I get a sapphire bolt spec with smite with greater corruption, that'll work. So I guess I can do that one, but the rest of them I'm not going to bother with. But uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I might as well go do that. Well, that was easy. Hey, let's go, ancient icon. Ended up taking me 39 KC, which is under the drop rate, so that is always nice to see. And, uh, yeah, I guess I can go and put my smoke quartz on it, too. So, it ended up taking me 25 kills on the task, and that took me just about an hour and a half. So, that was a nice quick one, and I'm gonna put the loot on screen again, because it's just crazy how much money you can get from this thing. Uh, but yeah, there, there it is. And, uh, Ancient Icon, you use it on the Ancient Staff. Uh, I guess I have to go and talk to Eblis one sec. Okay, so there we go. After talking to Eblis, he combined the Icon and the Staff together to make the Ancient Scepter. And, uh, yeah, the Scepter itself is actually an upgrade for me. Uh, it has a plus 5% magic damage and can auto-cast Ancient Magics, which is very useful. And then I believe I can just slap that on there and make it into the Smoke Ancient Scepter, which doesn't really matter. It still has all the effects of the old Scepter. Uh, it just has the benefit of whatever the heck the Smoke Quartz does. Uh, but yeah, the Smoke or the Ancient Scepter itself also increases the passive effects of the Ancient Magic spells uh, by 10% which means better poison, which I don't really care about from smoke spells, uh, lower attack reduction from shadow spells, again, don't really care, uh, but it does make the blood spells heal for more and the ice spells uh, do more damage or freeze for longer and have a higher accuracy. So it is pretty useful and I think this is now my best bursting weapon for like bursting slayer tasks and stuff. So that is pretty cool. And we're done, so we can move on. Let's go get a new task. Okay, back on the spreadsheet, complete the Muspa task, and I'm just now realizing I don't really know where we're at for the length of this video, uh, so hopefully we can get a quick one and just go and do it right now and then wrap up the video there, but let's see what we're doing. Oh my god, it's the perfect task, let's go! After those back-to-back -back Guardians of the Rift tasks, I'm glad to see that the task generator is being a bit nicer to me. Uh, the Falador Diary is the last diary we need, and it's only one thing left on here where we need to purchase a white two-handed sword, which you need a certain rank, and you get those ranks by killing Black Knights. So I just have to go and slaughter a bunch of Black Knights. I think it's like 1,300, uh, which is not going to be super fast. It'll take a few hours, but uh, all things considered, it will be a fairly quick task. So I'm just going to go get started right away. Uh, obviously just going to use the bow for a full crystal, and I may even bring my cannon just to speed it up a little bit. Like I said, the Falador Diary is the last diary I have left, uh, which is big for a couple of reasons. One, it gives me the Achievement Cape, which is just useful all around. There are a bunch of fairly unique teleports that you can't really get with anything else, which is very cool. And two, uh, and this is more of a sentimental reason, the Achievement Diary Cape was sort of like my biggest goal that I ever had on my main account. And I never actually finished it, uh, you know, burnout and playing other games and stuff. And this is going to be the first time that I ever have it on any account. And I don't know, that just sort of means a lot to me. It's sort of a, well, for lack of a better term, a big achievement. And I'm really proud of myself for it. And so here we are in the Black Knight's base in the uh, Taverly dungeon here. And I have brought my cannon, as you can see. Now, unfortunately, it is a single way combat zone, uh, but as you can see by this, if you stand in between these two chairs, uh, the knights will get trapped on either corner, as long as they don't like come running in this way, which as you can see, if they try, they actually get caught behind that pillar. So this is a nice way to cannon them in a single combat zone in a nice safe spot. I'm gonna use up to 3000 cannonballs. I don't know how many it's gonna take, uh, but uh, that's all I'm willing to use for this. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I need to kill 1300 of them. I'll see you in a bit. So after using 1,000 of the 3,000 cannonballs I'm willing to use here, I got about one third of the way to the 1,300 kills I need. So yeah, that's convenient. <laughs> Thank you. 
As you probably saw there, I had my main account come over so I could get some better footage of me killing these Black Knights, and I realized that the only reason this spot isn't perfect is because they can come and hit me right here, so if I just have my main account stand there, then I actually can't get hit by any of them. So this is great. Well, thanks to my main blocking here, my kills per hour did go up quite a bit there, uh, but so did my cannonballs used per hour because I was never in combat, it was just firing the whole time. So I used all 3,000 of the cannonballs and I still have about 160 kills left, so just give me one sec. Oh hey, would you look at that? You are a white knight master, we are done, let's go buy the thing. So this guy up here will sell white knight equipment, I need to buy a white two-handed sword. And you are done. Oh my god, it feels so good. But we're not really done until we claim the rewards. Oh my goodness, just look at it. Yeah, so, Falador Elite Rewards. Obviously, we got the 50k XP lamp. You already know it's going straight onto Herblore. Uh, the Falador Shield now will restore 100% prayer twice per day, which then makes it better than bringing, like, a prayer potion if you're going to do something, uh, most notably stuff like Inferno and whatnot. So that is actually pretty cool. Uh, tree Patch Falador will never get disease, don't really care. Increased chance of receiving higher level ore or can pay dirt, sure. And allowed access to the alternative Amethyst Mining Spot, which is one of the things that I already mentioned. I'm trying to work towards 92 mining as is, so... Uh, yeah, done with that. More importantly, let's go get the cape. I am actually so excited about this. You have no idea. This has been such a long-term goal of mine. And not only that, it's like one of the more useful teleport capes. Uh, it has so many unique teleports. I don't even think I can fit them all on the screen here. But essentially, you can teleport to any of the Achievement Diary people from any of the places. And it turns out that's like most of the major cities and some kind of obscure places like you can have free teleports to the Tazar area like I don't know there's just so many cool teleports with this cape also this cape is now my closest infinite teleport to a bank uh, the desert jar teleport teleports you to the Shantae Pass and it is anywhere between 7 and 11 tiles uh, which is closer than what I was using before which was the farming cape which I believe was like I don't know I don't remember uh, but yeah, new closest teleport to a bank, achievement diary cape unlocked, and it looks amazing next to the quest point of the music cape. Oh, it feels so good. I do wish they made the cape match the actual armor, because uh, it looks a little goofy, but <laughs> I'm still, I'm just, I'm so happy. Uh, anyway, let's go roll a new task, see what we're doing next video. Okay, here we are, let's do the thing. And then let's do the other thing. One unique from Shades of Morton. Okay, sure. I'm going to have to green log Shades of Morton in the elite tier eventually, which involves getting all the locks, all the zealot pieces, and the journals, of which I'm just missing the tree wizards. So this time I'm probably going to end up getting the steel locks. Uh, but in the future, when I get the gold locks, I'm going to need 95 fire making. So I'm actually going to have to go back to Winter Todd for that. But because I still have the steel locks to get, that won't be a problem. We can just jump right into this in the next video. But that's going to have to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you did, don't forget to leave it a like. It's the best way to help my videos with the YouTube algorithm. And maybe consider subscribing while you're down there. Uh, I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you want to help me with that goal, just, just click the button. Thanks. But yeah, I'm having so much fun with these elite tasks. This is like my favorite part of the game when you get to do those like late to end game bosses, get those big upgrades, etc. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's going to be it for me. I'll see you in the next one. And a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my tier three Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Jack Stalmer, Zach Martin, Luxitaire, Tony Adkins, and Dolph. Thank you guys, and thank you everyone on screen here for the support.